All right, so welcome to Module 2, which is the Overview Module, and we're in Section 1. I want to start off talking to you a little bit about how to actually navigate through an existing PowerPoint presentation. So you'll notice I've actually pulled one up here, and we're going to go through the screen and all that stuff a little bit later. So for right now, just kind of notice that I'm working in a view in which I see several things at once. I see the slide here, I see a mini copy of the slides over here, but what I want to do right now is actually run through what we call running the slideshow. This is what your audience would see if you were actually presenting because you really don't want your audience to see this view, okay? So you can do this a couple of ways. First of all, notice there is a tab called slideshow at the top and you can run your slideshow from the beginning of the presentation, the slide you're on, which is the current slide. Also, I want you to kind of notice that in the olden days, we had to actually use these buttons way down here at the bottom. These are your different views as well. This last one is slideshow, so that's the same thing as clicking on one of these two here. Now I'm just going to click on from the beginning. Now, this is one of the features that I mentioned they've really, really changed a lot because in the older versions you would be launched right into just what the audience would see. Here you have some choices that you can work with and one of the things I'm going to do is I'm using a dual monitor system. I know you can't see the one over on the right, but let me go ahead and choose display settings and I'm going to swap the different views here and this is really what running the slideshow looks like. All right, so this is what you'd want the audience to see. Now, a couple things as we go through here, I want to actually present this in a way that I can tell you some of the things we're going to be doing as we go through these different videos. And right now, we happen to be on what we call the title slide. Now, if you think about it, a book always has a cover, right? So your PowerPoint presentation should always have a title slide or a cover as well, and that's what this is. It introduces your topic. You can see a title slide has a title, and it can also have a subtitle. You don't have to have the subtitle, but they do in this particular case. Now, notice as we go through the presentation some consistency with colors. So you're not going to see pink on one, green on another, and red on another. It doesn't flow very well that way. You're going to notice also consistency with your fonts. You're not going to have 15 different fonts in your presentation. You might have some different sizes, but you're going to have a good font that flows well. Now, when you want to move to the next slide, you can do a couple of different things. What I see most people do is they have their mouse here and they just click and that takes them to the next slide. Well, that works fine, except it's not very professional. So if you want to hide your mouse, then just kind of move it out of the way and use your keyboard. You can use N for next or P for previous. You can use your arrow keys to go left or right. Any of that's going to work. And it's a lot more professional than just clicking the mouse. So I'm on the second slide. And I want you to notice that on most all of the slides, there's going to be a title at the top of that particular slide. Now, you don't have to have a title. You'll see one coming up shortly where we don't have one, but think about this. When you're presenting, people go to sleep, they chit-chat, they might be taking notes, and when they look up, you want them to know exactly what you're talking about. So that's why you want to have a title on most every slide. Now this particular slide is a bulleted slide, so you can see there's different bullets here. These are what we call first level bullets. You can have up to five levels. So you'll see on the next slide I'm going to show you what a second level looks like. Now I'm just going to use the mouse in this case because I'm trying to point to some different things here. This is my third slide and here again are my first level bullets. This is a second level. It talks about the first one. You can have up to five levels. So one of the things that we're going to be talking about later on is how to create the different levels of bullets. All right, my next slide is one where I've got some really basic little drawings that I've done. So you'll notice this one doesn't have a title even though it could, but I mentioned earlier that you don't have to and this is just an example of that. 
So notice when you draw different things, you can actually have text in there or nothing, pictures. You'll see a little bit of that later on. All right. This particular slide has some actual photographs or pictures, and we'll talk about putting those in. Here's one that has what we call an animated GIF or an animated bitmap file. So I'm going to show you how to find those and put those in as well. All right, here's an example of charts. So if you've done charts in Excel before, then this should be somewhat familiar to you because you can actually put them in PowerPoint as well, and we'll be doing that. This particular one is an example of what we call smart art. So I'm going to show you how to set up different levels. So let's say your organization has a president at the top and then you want to have some vice presidents below and maybe some managers below that. There's different types of smart art that you can create. And this is just one example. Now, all presentations should have an ending slide for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it's your clue not to click again because if you do, you're going to see a black slide. I'm going to show you that in a second. It's also the audience's clue that you're getting ready to wrap things up. So a lot of times an ending slide will have the word questions. I've seen that before. So if the presenter's ready to let the audience ask questions, that's a good way for them to know it's time. Um, you can see in this particular case, it's just saying hurry up and get registered. So there's a lot of different things you can put on your ending slide. It really doesn't matter, but make sure you have a title slide to open with and an ending slide to end with. Now, if you're finished your presentation, what you don't want to do is click again like I'm getting ready to do because then you're going to see a black slide. And in older versions, it actually said at the top, click here to end slideshow. Now, this is kind of tacky because, you know, it just kind of leaves this black slide here. Notice if I click again, I end up with this view. So that's why you want to have the ending slide so you know exactly when to stop clicking. So that's just a quick way to kind of move around if you happen to be working in your slideshow. If you happen to be working in this view, notice I can click on the left on whichever slide I'd like to work on. So that's one way to move around. And we're going to be seeing some other ones as we actually go through and look at some of these different videos. So let's go ahead and wrap this particular section up and let's move to section two where we get an overview of this desktop screen that you're looking at here. Hi, Molly here. Thanks for watching. If you need additional PowerPoint 2016 training, get our free three hour course for beginners. Click the get my free course button on the left. I'll see you next week with additional videos.